Hi, everyone. Welcome to May's version of the Reading Research Recap. Ignore the different background. I'm recording actually from a hotel room in San Diego where I'm attending the Reading League Summit. And this conference is great. It's all about how do we connect research to practice and include best practices for emergent bilinguals and English language learners. So this is a topic area I don't know much about, so I was really lucky and happy to be able to attend this conference. So bonus coverage of that after we do the deep dive on this month's paper. So for this month, I chose a paper on reading fluency interventions, instructional level, and text difficulty level. So all of these things are kind of combined in this meta-analysis, which I love because instructional level is a term that's thrown around a lot, but there's a lot of confusion around it. So the too long didn't read or too long didn't watch version is that you should be using an accuracy criterion to determine the difficulty level of a text or passage that you are selecting for your students in order to improve, improve their fluency growth. So that accuracy criterion should be 93 to 97% of words read correctly. If you're confused by all of this, stick around because I'll get into all the details and I'm sure it'll be clear by the end of this video segment. We know that fluency interventions work, but there is a lot of variability in their effectiveness, meaning we don't know why one intervention fluency interventions more effective than another. However, a good place to start is examining passage difficulty because passage difficulty accounted for about 50% of the variance in the effectiveness of these fluency interventions. That's why Dr. Matt Burns decided to investigate which of these four criteria or measures we should use to determine text difficulty level, i.e. which one of these four led to the optimal student fluency growth. The author chose to investigate or answer this question empirically by conducting a meta-analysis. So he searched all the prior literature, gathered all the studies, he found 21 different studies, and they used a population or sample of students in grades K through 5, so mostly a younger sample of students. He aggregated the effect sizes using a random effects meta-analytic model, and let's check out the results. The results showed that the accuracy criterion was the best. It led to the most student fluency growth compared to these other metrics. So what's the take home message or the practical implications for you as a teacher? Well, they're pretty clear given the results. So if you're doing screening or progress monitoring, you could still use words correct per minute or that fluency criteria. But when it comes to a metric or a criterion for selecting fluency passages, for your struggling readers, you're gonna to wanna to use that accuracy criterion of 93 to 97% of words read correctly. Again, this is mostly for your struggling readers, not the ones that are you know, average or above. You can kind of just let them go, choose their own stuff and just keep an eye on them and monitor them. So ideally, you would, this wouldn't be super intensive in a classroom. It'd be maybe five to 10 students that you have to do this um, sort of assessment with to see if it's at the right, sorry, to see if the passage or text is at the right instructional level that will lead to optimal growth and fluency for those students. Okay, on to a short segment bonus coverage of the Reading League Summit Conference. Travel was smooth and it was great to arrive in sunny San Diego at the Town and Country Resort. The mission of this summit was to put research into practice for emergent bilinguals and English learners. There are, I believe, about a thousand people in this room. The day started with a wonderful keynote by Dr. DeHen, and he talked about the neuroscience behind emergent bilinguals and how the speech area is basically repurposed for reading. He also talked about the differences between France and the United States. It seems like France is light years ahead in terms of using research to guide instruction. He also said that they had data showing that teachers who used curriculum that focused on decoding and phonics had students that performed better than teachers who used curriculum that focused on memorization and sight words, which of course I found interesting. The panel on assessment was really informative. So emergent bilinguals should be assessed in both languages. And this is different than your universal um, screening measures for reading struggles or reading disabilities. Assessments should be valid, reliable. They should include familiar content and they should be free of bias. And we have empirical statistical ways of checking for this now. So be sure you're reading those technical manuals on your assessments. 
Dr. Lillian Duran talked about innovations in conceptual scoring and having both English and Spanish scoring on a single unitary scale. She talked about a new two minute assessment as well that she's working on. I especially loved how Dr. Francesca Smith put research into practice by giving us practical teaching tips for emergent bilinguals. It was kind of hard to stay indoors all day given how beautiful it was outside, but it was worth every second. So huge thank you to the Reading League to putting on such an amazing conference. Also look at this wonderful tree, such a contrast to all the tall, skinny, top heavy palm trees. I have no clue what it is, but I'm definitely gonna look it up. Conference After Party was hosted by Express Readers, makers of these really fun, engaging, decodable books, who Express Readers was also an inaugural partner in our Lexel Find a Decodable Book tool, so be sure to check them out there. Party got a little bit crazy. No, just kidding, of course not. We just sat around and read Decodables by the fire pit all night. All right, that's all that I have for May, and I will see everybody in June.